So this habit is like gas for my fulfillment. And without it, I'm like a, a rocket that just like propels upward and then just absolutely crashes and burns in spectacular fashion. Most of what we do on this channel is we try to find ways to help others live happier, more fulfilled lives. So today I want to share one habit that has helped me do just that. This is the habit of learning. <laughs> I know, earth shattering. Okay, so you may have heard this be called something like the 1% rule of improvement. Basically means or says that we try to improve our lives a, a little amount each day um, just they throw an arbitrary number out there like 1%. But it's the idea that we constantly keep improving by a little bit each day and that slow improvement over a long period of time will amount to massive amounts of change versus going into a plateau with big spikes and then more plateaus. Now, what makes this very different from simply learning as we go through life, which we all do, we you have to pretty much, it's very consistent in that we learn out of desire, not necessity. And it takes quite a bit of effort as we'll see later on in the video. So as not to waste your time, the format for this video is we are first going to talk about the habit of learning, like what that is and why most people have a hard time implementing it. Next, we're gonna talk about my favorite part about this whole thing is uh, why learning is so important and what it literally does to help your brain be slightly more immortal, which is kind of awesome. And finally, we're gonna learn how to wrap this all up into a nice, neat little present of actionable things that we can do each day uh, of how to implement this into our very busy day-to-day -day lives and how this habit has brought fulfillment into my life. Learning is very important, we all know that, but knowledge is not power, knowledge is potential power, which is why most of us don't actually make intentional time for this habit. And a very common misconception here is that we learn in spurts and if you're like me, you're like, oh, that's totally fine, right? You know, you're coming along flat line in here and then psh, you learn a little bit and then you fly a line and then you, you learn a little bit more. It's actually not how it works because during that period of plateau, you're not just going flat. Your brain is actually deteriorating and you're going downhill and the skills and those memories and the things you're learning, it literally shrinks it away from your brain, which is kind of freaky. So you're actually more going like flat, up and then like down here and then and then back so you're doing this kind of wave motion thing and we don't want to do that we want to keep that consistent line going up and the reason why most of us aren't very intentional about this is actually very logical it's because learning has a delay effect um, you know it's like if I told you you know hey learn lots of stuff because you know maybe next month you'll be happier it's like yeah, uh, nah, I'm not, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> so instead of doing that, I wanna give you some information that has an immediate effect on you. So every single second, your brain is making about 700 new connections all over the brain. And at the same time as it's doing that, it's also pruning and trimming away and shrinking inactive connections. A good way of thinking about this is your brain is like a super highway of awesome information. And the more roads and connections you have in your brain, the easier it is to do something and the, the, the faster you can do it. It's like a, a road system, right? So you have a, a highway and you can have, you have multiple ways of getting to the end result. So if a, if a tree crosses the, the, the one road and blocks it, you're not completely stumped. You have a way to go around it. And the better we get at something and the more we learn, that is basically what our brain is doing. It's making more and more connections around the different directions you wanna go. Now, those connections can be connecting anything from, hey, Cheetos taste really good, to let's figure out how to end world hunger. So what does that have to do with anything regarding fulfillment? Quite a bit, actually. So let's go ahead and talk about this three pounds of awesomeness in your your like brain helmet. Today, scientists estimate that about 95% of our brain activity is unconscious, meaning that the majority of the decisions we make, um, the actions we take, the emotions and behaviors that we do and, and we have are done by about 95% of the brain that lies below the conscious level. Now, thankfully, most of that 95% we don't need to worry about it's it's just basic brain function you know like your heart beating you don't have to think about that it's kind of nice but there is some in, inside that 95 percent or so that that has quite a bit of an effect on our lives and so by learning how our minds operate we're able to pull out those behaviors of uh, habits attraction emotion things like that so we, we kind of 
pull them out into the light a little bit and we can work with them and we can begin to learn how to control them. It might be a little bit hard for you to understand quite what I mean by me saying that. So uh, let me give you a few examples. Like you might appreciate knowing that the subconscious mind has a habit of taking everything literally. So if you continuously tell yourself that you will never succeed in a particular venture, then it will probably turn out that way. The subconscious is subjective, meaning that it doesn't think uh, or rationalize um, independently. It simply obeys the command that is given by the conscious mind. If you think you can or you think you cannot, you are right. So with this in mind, it slowly brings into awareness how powerful limiting belief systems are. Like if you actually believe something, that has a huge effect over your brain. You're, you're losing like <laughs> a lot of brain power to that belief if you believe you cannot do something. Okay, another example. We take about 20,000 breaths a day, most of which, thankfully, are unconscious. Now, let's say that you're stressed and overwhelmed. Now, some of you may feel like going and eating because that makes you feel better. But why does it make you feel better? Well, it turns out that when you fill your stomach with food, you begin to breathe more with your diaphragm. And what that does is it stimulates a nerve in the brain that helps you calm down and it helps you focus more. It allows more blood flow to the frontal cortex, which is your rational thinking and the, the logical part of your brain. And you begin to think more rationally and things start looking less overwhelming. Except now you don't need to eat food to get that. Why? Because you've learned why your subconscious is telling you to go overeat when you're stressed. And these are only tiny examples, but as you can see, tracking down behavior that your subconscious is controlling is very beneficial. Something that Tony Robbins says that I really, really like is he says, you can have a billion dollars, but if you're angry, frustrated, and annoyed, then your life is angry, frustrated, and annoyed. So for me, some of the deepest fulfillment has come from learning how to dig deeper into what drives my my behavior and finding healthy alternatives for that. And I simply can't do that without a better understanding of my behavior and why I do what I do. Another awesome thing that learning does is it literally changes the structure of your brain. And these structural changes alter the functional organization of the brain. In other words, learning organizes and reorganizes your brain. This may sound a little bit like neuroplasticity, which is the ability for your brain to change, that is to create, strengthen, weaken, or dismantle connections between your neurons. Neurons are the highway of your brain, pretty much, in a very dumbed down <laughs> awareness of that. And this is the coolest part. Despite what you may believe, the aging brain responds in the exact same way that a child's brain does when they learn. It creates new task-oriented synapses that can be recruited for other uses. Again, this goes back to the highway of, of information analogy. And the more we, we learn and the more connections we make and alternate routes, the more our brain can quickly navigate and the faster you can learn something new. And when you learn, your brain literally expands in size as more and more connections are made. And the more those connections are used, the faster and faster they fire, the more things you can learn and the more you can remember. This is basically giving you more control over your brain, which is the beauty of neuroplasticity. The dark side of neuroplasticity is that it can work against you. For example, if there is an absence of mental stimulation, the connections degrade, they shrink away, and they're actually pruned from your brain. If this keeps happening, your brain literally will shrink, which is kind of wild. A typical effect of aging is that the brain actually shrinks due to the consequence of a cumulative uh, removal of brain connections. And one of my favorite authors likes to say that he tries to become a little bit more immortal each day, <laughs> which I kind of like because it's, it's reversing that process. For me, the longer I can maintain mental agility, the longer I can do what I've been been called to do. Okay, so how do we do this? Because I'm pretty busy. So let's assume for just a minute that you uh, don't want your brain to chop off those connections, effectively shrinking your brain, and that you want to learn and live a fulfilled life. In pursuit of that, again, this is a small sliver of living a fulfilled life. I want to make that, that clear. <laughs> and I'm speaking from my own experience here. So for myself, that little sliver, I try to set aside an hour each day, specifically dedicated to the task of learning, which is, you know, 1 24th of my day, as it were. My personal favorite way of doing this is to spend time reading, learning a new skill, memorizing, or, or something like that. And you can choose to do something different. Maybe you want to try to understand more of what's happening below the surface. So I found that exercise, memorizing, and reading are my top like three favorites. Um, so especially reading, you can do it pretty easily. You can listen to audiobooks, etc. et um, So if you wanna try that and you don't really know where to start, what's a good book, you know, that sort of thing, um, I would recommend this video where I kinda of talk about, you know, my top books from last year and what I enjoyed about them and 
which ones are beneficial. Now, perhaps you don't deem it important enough to spend an hour each day expanding the function of your brain effectively you know, minimizing the shrinkage that's actually happening when you don't learn. And you're like, well, okay, maybe you're too busy for that. Are there things that you can kind of fit in edgewise to, you know, speed up this process, even though you don't give a whole lot of time to it. And for that, I usually use audio of some kind, whether it's podcasts or, or audiobooks. For me, audiobooks is a really big one. Um, and I use Scribd for that, which is by far the best audiobook platform I've ever found. Um, it's remarkably cheap. It's just a monthly subscription. You pay, you know, nine bucks a month and you get unlimited access to all of their books. Unlike Audible, where you have to like buy a book if you want to listen to it. Here, you just give them their monthly fee and you get unlimited access to as many books as you want. And the best part is that if you click the link in the, in the description, you can use my affiliate link, which will give you one month for free, no fees, no charge, nothing. So you have a whole month to just listen to audiobooks, And then afterward, you just cancel it, move on if you don't like it. Or another great way of learning is to take a task that you know how to do. And instead of doing it the normal way, uh, pick an alternate way of doing it. Try to think outside the box, think like an amateur, you know, like you're doing it brand new again, just make a totally different way of doing it and just force your brain out of autopilot. But in reality, it's actually really, really hard to learn and grow the mind without intentionality. Even if it's very short amounts of time of, of, of focused learning, it's, it's very worth it. Even learning just like one fact that you can implement in your day-to-day -day life, kind of like the ones that I shared earlier in the video, will really, really help you get out of that autopilot and kind of pushing the brain outside of that um, normal automation that happens. And I do want to say, I don't think it's impossible to find fulfillment if, if you don't specifically do these things that I'm mentioning, um, because fulfillment is very multifaceted, right? Like there are many ways to, to, to be fulfilled in life. And this is just one aspect of how I've chosen to do that. It's like one little, one segment of the pie as it were. And for me specifically, the reason why this brings so much fulfillment to my life is that it allows me to be able to give back to other people and to contribute um, and help other people because I can't really do that if I'm not learning. It's, like I said at the beginning, it's the gas that allows me to continue to give back to other people, which is, I think it's like one of the, one of the best things <laughs> that anyone can do is to give back to other people. It's just, it's so rewarding. It helps me set in motion something bigger than myself, right? Like you can, you can leave footprints of your life or you can start rolling something that will continue to keep rolling even after you're dead and gone and buried and all that fun stuff. And I kind of like that idea. Not the dead and gone, buried and kind of stuff, like the, you know, the, the, the rolling part of it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And without learning, my, my worldview just, it, it, it shrinks. And my, my comfort level like closes in around me and it, it slowly pushes out things that I'm not comfortable with. Um, and it, yeah, I don't know. It feels like I slowly kind of suffocate. And as I as I suffocate, like I get dissatisfied with life, and it feels stale. And it just I, I don't feel like I can reach out to other people, which which kind of creates like a domino effect, except on a very large scale and in a in a space that I I can't afford to have that happen. Especially comfort zone, like really shrinks the comfort zone if if I stop learning. Speaking of comfort levels, if you're at all interested in you know stepping outside of your comfort zone and, and growing through that, then. I think you'll really enjoy the video that I put in the dead center of the screen here for you, specifically for that topic.